I'm somewhat of a geek. I programmed computer games in junior high school. I love science magazines. And I've always been fascinated by the brain. How do we maximize productivity? Are there things we can do to enhance brain health? To answer these questions, I sat down with Associate Professor of Neurology at NYU, Dr. Michael Hutchinson. I first asked him to explain the myth of multitasking. If you want to listen to two conversations, one is from the right ear, the other is from the left ear, I can guarantee you cannot hear both conversations and be conscious of both conversations at the same time. You can listen to one and you can remember something of what the other one was and then you can go back and forth you know, every few seconds and maybe you can get some idea about what both people are talking about. But you cannot simultaneously um, monitor two conversations. I think the, uh, the issue is re really regarding consciousness. Whatever consciousness is, uh, you can only be conscious of one thing at a time, not two things at a time. So for high cognitive things, we don't really multitask, we switch. So how do we do something as complex as driving? You're driving a car, you've got a passenger, you're attending to your passenger's conversation. At the same time, you're keeping an eye on the road. You're shifting gears. Uh, so you've got the visual input that you're processing. You're avoiding pedestrians, we hope. The avoidance of pedestrians and the navigation of the automobile in a straight line and attending to traffic stops and so on is done semi-consciously. You became fully conscious of the visual field that you were looking at. You know, you were looking in detail at people's clothing. Uh, you were looking in detail at uh, every little visual detail. You, could, you would lose track. In other words, when you paid attention in the visual space, you would lose track of the conversation that you were having with your passenger. So you cannot simultaneously, I think, pay attention conscious attention to two tasks at the same time. Recent studies have shown that driving while talking on the phone is like driving drunk. It's actually, if you're using a cell phone, um, you're distracted to the point where you're more likely to have traffic accidents. So though you're able to do this pretty well, and nevertheless you are somewhat impaired. The bottom line? Selectively multitask, such as working out on the Stairmaster and watching TV. If you need to get something important done, focus. You want to solve difficult problems. You work on one problem at a time until you run into a brick wall. And then you turn to another problem until you run into a brick wall. Then you turn to another problem. And you can actually know that your brain is processing these things more or less simultaneously because weeks later, the answer to one problem, and then the other, and then the third, and then the fourth will pop into your consciousness. And I'm sure you've experienced that. I mean, it, it's uh, and it's a very eerie feeling when you're not even paying attention to the the task that you were thinking about three weeks ago, and suddenly the answer pops into your head. If you're doing things unconsciously, the brain is processing unconsciously. You can do things in parallel. William Proctor and Harvard professor Dr. Herbert Benson call this the breakout principle. Work on something until you can't figure it out anymore. You can't make it progress and switch to something else and be calm about it. The, the solution will come with time. So what can we do to boost brain health? Exercise seems to be a clear answer. People who exercise throughout life have lower uh, prevalence rates of, uh, of those dementing and, and uh, physically disabling neurodegenerative conditions. So uh, I think exercise is always good. and. and you know, is it possible that it's an epiphenomenon that the people who are capable of exercising in the middle of life are also the people who are taking care of themselves uh, with nutrition? And there's some nutritional aspects of this we don't know. You know, perhaps they're getting uh, large amounts of vitamin E because they're eating right. And because they're eating right, they're slimmer, and because they're slimmer, they can exercise. One theory uh, was that uh, exercise releases growth factors, and growth factors stimulate uh, uh, growth of neurons and, and uh, re-sprouting of neurons. Wow, we can re-sprout neurons in our brain through our lifestyle choices. So I ask about the importance of sleep. Sleep is interesting in itself. The question is why do we have to sleep for eight hours? 
One of the reasons we sleep may be to dream. Dreaming occurs in the REM phase of sleep, which occurs every 90 minutes or so. You're in REM briefly, and that's when you dream. And then you cycle up, and then you come back down again, and 90 minutes later you're in REM sleep again. That's with normal sleeping. When you look at what REM sleep is, it's rapid eye movement. So the interesting thing about REM sleep is that the body is basically paralyzed below the below the neck, but the ocular, the extraocular mu muscles are extremely active. So the eyes move very rapidly. They're the only muscles in the body that are active. Why is it important to paralyze the body? Because if during this active phase of sleep you start getting up and wandering around, you're going to be eaten by the saber-toothed tiger living in the next cave, and we wouldn't be here to talk about it. So. Um, that tells me the dream is very important. I think Francis Crick's um, explanation uh, was interesting, uh, where basically the brain is dumping, it has to dump information it found useless that it accumulated during the day, and is dumping it and in such a way that it can function more effectively the next day. It's rather like your computer, when you have to clear up the desktop at the end of the day so the machine runs more effectively the next day, something like that. So if you're not getting your proper length of sleep time, then obviously your brain is not going to be functioning quite as effectively. What about puzzles and brain games? Can they slow down mental decline? It seems a reasonable proposition that, that when you're using your brain, you're, you're forming more synaptic connections. So if there is some genetic predisposition to getting Alzheimer's, uh, you know, you're going to come from a higher height, you know, and, and you've got more synapses to lose before you become symptomatic. So how old is your brain? So the interesting thing is when people look younger than their stated age, you scan them and the brain looks younger as well. How are you managing your brain health? In what areas can single tasking versus multitasking improve your productivity? The ability to focus can actually save your life. The power is in your hands.